Now let's talk about iPhone. So it's that time of year again where Apple fans like myself rejoice at the fact that Apple have announced the newest iPhones. For me, I enjoy hearing Tim Cook's introduction where he says, Good morning. Let me know in the comments below if you get that same feeling when you hear those words. This year, it's the turn of the iPhone 15 and also for me, my two year upgrade cycle has arrived, which means I'll be taking a lot of interest in this one because I'll be upgrading to one of these phones from my trusty iPhone 13 Pro, which has served me well over the last two years. Stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll let you know which iPhone 15 model and color chosen. So the main points of the Apple event from the iPhone point of view. Firstly were those colours, the flamboyant and more adventurous iPhone 15 colours in pink, yellow, green, blue and black. Or we'll probably expect to see another iPhone 15 colour at some point early next year when Apple does their regular thing and brings in some mid-season attention and sales back to the iPhone with another out there colour. Meanwhile, the iPhone 15 Pro comes in what would be best described as less adventurous and more duller titanium colours in natural blue, white and black. I sometimes wish that they were more outgoing with their Pro phones as they are with their standard phones, but I'm sure this year that the natural and blue colours will be popular. But some of us Pro users do like a bit of flair and flamboyance in our lives sometimes. And I just wish we had that with our colours of our Pro iPhones. The dynamic island introduced on last year's Pro models is now a feature on all the models. And thankfully, I'm not gonna really miss that notch. I remember watching last year's keynote when they first introduced the dynamic island and I was so close to upgrading from this to a 14 Pro just because of it. Thankfully, I made the right and sensible decision not to upgrade. So now it's a feature across all of the models. Hopefully going forward from this point, developers will now focus on making the dynamic island experience as good as it should be with loads more apps taking advantage of what the dynamic island can do. Now, I like taking photos and videos with my phone. So having a phone that is capable of taking really good, high quality photos and videos is really an important feature of a phone for me. While videos taken on iPhones are generally pretty good, for me historically, it's the photography side of some location-based images that have let the iPhone down in the past. Sometimes the sky's blown out, night shots are under or overexposed, but never that perfect shot which arguably other phone brands are getting better at. But hopefully with the new 48 megapixel main camera and the improved machine learning that Apple is incorporating within their new phones to accompany the new hardware, that is going to make those sharp, richer images that are produced by these new iPhones, like the ones that we saw in the keynote, the best by Apple so far, until the iPhone 16 that is. This year's iPhone 15 Pro Max has a slight difference other than size, weight, and battery life compared to the 15 Pro, and that's the telephoto camera. Instead of the three times optical zoom on the Pro and the two times optical zoom on the non-Pro models, the Pro Max has a five times optical zoom thanks to that slightly more room that you get in the Pro Max that allows for what Apple calls Tetra Prism, which allows for light to travel into the camera sensor, giving an equivalent focal length of 120 millimeters. So you'll be able to get Close to your subject than ever before before you even have to think about doing digital zoom which i've never been a fan of particularly on an iphone i do like the idea of that shifting focus in a portrait photo feature after you've taken photo but i remember when the hdc one m8 was doing something similar with their u focus feature almost 10 years ago but is it a feature that i'll use going forward i suppose only time will tell I think iPhones always look like manufactured pieces of modern art, very symmetrical in their design and finished to a very high standard as you would expect. This year's iterations are no different. The non-pros feature that colour infused back glass surrounded by the aluminium enclosure with the ceramic shield protecting a Super Retina HDR display, while the pros have the textured matte black back, the same ceramic shield on the XDR display and that new brushed titanium enclosure, which looks so much better than the fingerprint magnet that is that stainless steel frame. Hopefully the new titanium frame is less prone to fingerprints than this one. All of these design features are intended to make the phone tougher and stronger than ever before and with that titanium on the pros making them lighter than their predecessors and hopefully more comfortable to hold as well. But 
stop the presses. Apple are giving its users the ability to customize something on the phone. First it was iOS 16 with the new personalization features and widgets, and now it's the action button. I think I'm gonna miss that mute switch, that thing there that permanently kept my iPhone 13 Pro in mute. In fact, I can't even remember the last time I used it. Well, I'm gonna flick it on non-silent now, so it's probably gonna be the last time I ever do use it. So on the pros only, away with the mute switch and welcome the action button, a programmable button that when enabled allows you to keep it as it was before as a silent mode toggle, change focus mode, enable camera, the torch, initiate voice memos, the translate feature, the magnifier, any pre-made shortcut, which essentially is almost any action of your iPhone and finally the accessibility feature, all from pressing and holding down that action button. Remember, it's only on the pros this year, but I'm guessing that they'll be passed down to the non-pros next year. And finally, the one feature so many of us have been waiting for, USB-C. How many of you would have thought that you'd ever see the day that an Apple-made iPhone would move from Lightning to USB-C? I honestly thought that the threat from the EU may have pushed Apple to go straight to a portless phone first, but in truth, I don't think the capabilities of MagSafe is quite there yet. But in the meantime, USB-C. Yay. I'm quite surprised that Apple in the keynote played the whole move to USB-C thing quite low par. I was expecting some big fanfare and something where they talk about USB-C being the next big thing, similar to when they moved the iPhone over to fully adopt 5G. It was almost as if we'd never heard of the thing before, but with USB-C, it was different. But that's fine, USB-C is a great move. The endless possibilities, the accessories that will now be compatible with your iPhone, the charging cables that you can share with your Android mates, the quickest transfer speeds that you'll be able to get that ProRes footage from your phone, over to your Mac instead of using AirDrop, you'll be able to charge a pair of the new case AirPod directly from your phone, connect to external drives so they can save directly onto the drive. Those are the th things that are worth the upgrade alone that move to USB-C. There will be a lot of Android users out there that this could be a turning point and that previously wouldn't move over to iPhones because they had lightning on them. But what's stopping them now? September, 2023 the month of the new iPhone 15s. Better design, better build, better chips with the A17 Pro and the A16 Bionic, better cameras, and of course, USB-C. But let's not forget about the little things like that potential transition of A-list console games being playable on the pros, the ability to be able to record spatial videos compatible with the upcoming Apple Vision Pro, which are essentially 3D videos, which is pretty impressive. Those emergency SOS via satellite and the crash detection features carried over from the previous generation, all working with iOS 17 to give you the most complete Apple mobile experience that you'll get. As I always say, the generation to generation upgrades are never really worth it because of those incremental changes that those transitioning from a 14 to 15 isn't going to benefit from, but users of phones outside of that should feel the benefit of upgrading if they're able to. It seems like this year, every iPhone 15 model has its benefits that outweigh its negatives and is packed with amazing features that should make any owner very happy. So the iPhone 15 that I opted for was the iPhone 15 Pro in the blue titanium design. I just love blue and it's gonna match my Apple Watch. If you've got any ideas for videos that you want to see when I get the new iPhone 15 Pro, just let me know in the comments below. And if you're going to get one of these new iPhones, let me know which one you're getting. Press the like button if you like this video, subscribe if you haven't already for videos just like this, and I'll see you in the next one.